Here's a question for you guys. What do you think about the scale of miniatures in miniature wargaming? I ask that because over the years I've realized that most miniature games don't actually follow a specific scale. And this is because of the limitations that we have with miniatures. Take this for example. This is a Hive Tyrant from the official Games Workshop kit. This is a kit-bashed Hive Tyrant, a grand Hive Tyrant made by Frankendoodle on Instagram, and then I painted it up for my High Fleet Nihilus. I commissioned him to do this because I wanted one that would stand out and be like the leader of the entire High Fleet, because I have right now 13 other individuals who are matching my paint scheme and coming to the grand narrative with me, and I wanted to have one Hive Tyrant that would stand out and lead the rest. And so I look at it though, and I was playing Space Marine 2, and realize that this Hive Tyrant is more appropriate for the scale of what you see in the game. And this Hive Tyrant is a little in bitty. But I get it because this one was made quite a while ago. I know this kit's been renewed a few times, but overall has not increased in size a whole lot since uh, the last few editions. Same thing with the Neuro Tyrant. I remember watching in the trailer for the launch of 40k 10th edition and seeing the Neuro Tyrant floating through the air all menacing. And then when it came out, I was like, oh, it's not that big. And so I had this one commissioned by Frank and Doodle, the Grand Neuro Tyrant, using pieces from like the Norn Emissary, Venom Throat, and other kits. And I thought, that's more like it. Even if it doesn't look like the one from the trailer was, this one looks just like a blown up version of the smaller Hive Tyrant. I think it looks epically large enough, especially because now they can attach with a group of Zone Throats. And so, and then I painted that up to the High Fleet Nihilist color scheme. So I'm partially making this video to show off these uh, miniatures, but also because I'm curious what you think on that subject. We've had this discussion a lot of times in uh, like just what the scale of things actually should be, like true scale Marines and Primaris Marines versus the, the, the older Marines and all that kind of stuff. And then throughout the ages, as the games have gone on, the upscaling of all of Games Workshop miniatures. This is not a bad thing, by the way. These, uh, their miniatures look fantastic. And by making them bigger, they are easier to paint as well in many ways. and allows them to add more detail and make them even more awesome. But then it also does create the problem of when you put them next to like, let's say a transport, and you wonder how do they fit inside of that little thing? Like, are we really supposed to believe that these 10 guys are able to fit inside of there? Well, no, because those are Primaris. But still, they would be similar size for the Firstborn to be able to fit inside of that Rhino. The Land Raider more feels like it's the right size. Uh, heck, even as we developed Ravage Star and we came out with the Veil Touch, which are basically our not Chaos Space Marines, that was the size that we made of the VTAT, which is essentially like the Rhino equivalent. And you can see it's upscaled even a bit there. And even that doesn't look like it could fit 10 guys inside of it. Once again, the Land Raider feels more appropriate for the size of a Rhino, and I feel like a Bane Blade would be the more appropriate size for a Land Raider. But I wouldn't actually want them to do that, because when we're playing on a 6x4 table, or now a 44 inch by 60 inch table, as the tables are getting smaller, and the models bigger, and the points costs decrease, but the points we play at increasing, because it was more typical for us to play at 1500 points before, when things cost a lot more points, and now we're playing at 2000 points, with a lower cost, and a smaller table, which means you fit less models on the table, and you end up with more of a bit of a parking lot situation. That's why I still love playing on six by four tables. I feel like you can get much more of a dynamic table here, especially with all this 3D printed stuff from the Forge. That's right, I'm gonna plug all sorts of stuff. We got the Forge printing terrain. We've got uh, Ravage Star making uh, the Veil Touch, but also the Gorkog and the Amari, the Space Bugs and the Dwarves, and yes, if you want to come to the Grand Narrative Games Workshop's awesome narrative event, and if you're still, it's only nine and a half weeks away, so you can still plan to come. And if you want bonus points and want to join me in my quest to make the biggest high fleet ever there, uh, email me, Matthew at MiniWarGaming.com. Another interesting conversation is on what scale are different miniature wargames at. 
we talk about 28 millimeter scale and 32 millimeter scale. And what those generally mean is, I, I believe th there's a couple different things I've heard. It's like one is like the eye height of the average human being. That would be what millimeters. So if like if you had a model and you measure from his feet to the eyes and that is 28 millimeters, well, that would be 28 millimeter scale. Obviously space marines are taller, so you have to account for that as you look at that. Then you have like 28 millimeter heroic, which is 28 millimeter, but kind of larger proportions and 32 millimeter and 32 millimeter heroic. Like you look at Lord of the Rings, it's more of a, uh, like a true scale size, if you will. Whereas the uh, other Games Workshop stuff and a lot of other lines too go for a more heroic scale because they make for much more interesting looking miniatures. I don't know, what do you prefer out of all those options? And then you have games like Team Yankee, who decide that we want to go to a 15 millimeter scale so we can have lots of tanks on the battlefield because we think that that's more important and allows us to have more accurate scales. You know, things aren't always perfectly accurate, but then infantry get to be this tiny, which makes them harder to paint and harder to give good detail. But in this game, they're not trying to show that. They're trying to have it at a more epic scale of what is on the table. Same thing goes for Legion Imperialis the new Epic, but even that's an interesting conversation because Epic used to be at six millimeter scale and now it's more at eight millimeter scale. So they're even making Epic larger than it was before. But by doing that, you get to bring in awesome looking Titans and the Titans actually work at this scale because they're so massively big that you can still show tons of their details without them taking over the entire battlefield. You know, anybody who's not really part of the miniature wargaming hobby might just see this as some nerd going, oh, toys, toys, big toys, little toys, littler toys, the littlest toys, and then the big toys. And, uh, but you understand that if this is the fun part of it, is like figuring this stuff out, what we like, what we don't like. Personally, I'm a fan of a lot of different scales. I love the eight millimeter scale because I love terrain. So being able to set up a big table of terrain um, that just looks epic, no pun intended, actually really just makes me excited. Like Battletech, for example, that scale, you can make really cool looking tables. But then I also love the 32 millimeter scale stuff and playing on smaller tables that are more just like this little narrative driven encounter. So I play role playing games on D&D and we don't get to play on a much bigger table than a kill team mat. And so you really just have to have just a handful of guys with one thing that's interesting going on and it focuses down to just that encounter. So. That can be fun as well. In the end, scale is fun and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Or as Josh would say, be the eyes, the eyes of those who behold her. I don't remember what he says, but it's something dumb because it's Josh and that's all good. So I hope that uh, you'll get a chance to come to the grand narrative. It is awesome. Such a good narrative event. I hope that you're having fun playing, converting, painting, all sorts of hobby stuff building terrain, making awesome looking tables, and just generally enjoying your life. And of course, as I am trying to do in this video, it is important to just move, just like Dave has been trying to get us all to do, to just move and get more healthy and get more active and get more happy, or happier, and so we can enjoy this hobby all together. I got really nothing else to say. Let me know what you think in the comments about scale, your issues with it, what you love about it, what you hate about it, and happy wargaming.